Hello viewers and welcome yet again to another episode of Dinner Guide. I'm your host Chef Andy and today we're going to be working with some lamb. We're going to be pairing that with some beautiful seasoning and I'm also going to be showing you some very beautiful ways about, around some very rare ingredients. Now to begin us off I'm going to begin by introducing the ingredients. From the very front I've got one cube of some stock. I've got also some cinnamon sticks and some garam masala, about a tablespoon. I've also got a few cloves of garlic already peeled, some dark soy sauce with some mushroom infusion. I've also got some fresh mint leaves and some chopped uh, spring onion. You're also going to require some coriander seeds and some chili flakes, some uh, garden peas there, some very beautifully julienne red pepper. You're also going to require two medium-sized peeled carrots, a few stems of some celery sticks, and a small spring of some fresh thyme. You'll also require about two tablespoons of sultanas, about 400 grams of some lamb on the bone, some salt for seasoning, some stock to cook with, and last but not least, some baby spinach. Now we're going to take a break now, allowing you to refresh yourselves and get ready for the show, and we'll catch you after a very short break. Welcome back viewers, for those of you who are just catching up, we're about to start this beautiful simple lamb dish. And to start us off, we're going to start by slicing our lamb. Now this is just lamb leg that's just been cut right across with the bone on. And this is a very particularly good cut, especially if you're going to be making anything particular in relation to strips or curries or any particular stews. And the beautiful thing about it, it also has some very, very beautiful, very lean fat that really, really uh, adds to the flavor of your lamb. So we're just going to start by cutting those into strips. And of course, at this stage, I will remind you, you should have a pan already on the heat. Make sure it's nice and smoking hot. That will aid in browning your meat a little faster. Now proceed to slice right to the very end. Making sure of course to also clean off the meat that's on the bone of course just taking bits and pieces off completely and you can discard the bone at this stage now just to finish that off right once that's done we're going to proceed to just reserve the rest of the remaining piece of meat And now onto a hot pan, we're going to begin by sealing our meat. So very lightly, a small drizzle of some oil. I'm going to be using vegetable oil for this particular recipe. Just make do with your oil, move your pan around. And once that's in there, proceed to add your meat. Of course, adding one piece at a time, making sure that none of your pieces is Tuck to the other. This particular technique always helps, especially if you're trying to brown meat and you're also trying to avoid it from holding on to, stop the pieces from holding on to the other. Also allows for you to be able to get a nice, beautiful, even color right around your meat.
And of course, remember cooking your meat once it's uh, throwing your meat in onto a pan that hasn't been spread out evenly may actually invoke uh, that you cook the meat too much on one side and not get a nice even color. So when you're making strips or frying up some strips, always make sure to spread them out on a pan. And that should allow for all the meat to brown and cook evenly. We're going to just toss that lightly. We're going to proceed to allow that to continue browning. In the meantime, just going to turn my board around. Just rinse off my knife. Now for the meat, we're going to continue browning this until it's just slightly darker in color. And while that continues, I'll also proceed to chop up the rest of our vegetables on the side. Of course, beginning with the carrot. So we're going to chop this into some very, very fine julienne. Right, so julienne being some very, very thin strips. So always try to make sure they're as thin as possible. Remember that does aid as well in making sure that they still remain nice and crispy. Gives your dish a very beautiful appearance. And of course it gives that beautiful texture to the eye. I'm just going to proceed to chop that till the very end. Once that's done, we're going to do the same with just a little bit of the the rest of course very important to always remember always pay attention to your pan of course tossing continuously making sure to get a nice even coloring of your meat And of course, proceed to also cook off all that excess fat that you had on your meat. Right, once that's done, we're also going to chop up some of our beautiful celery stick. So this we're going to use about just one piece and for this we're going to cut it right through the middle and chop that very finely into some very very small sizes right now once done we're going to proceed to rest our meat on a separate plate so very handy always have a plate ready to pull your meat out onto you can proceed to toss it once more of course always remembering to continue browning your meat right up until you get a nice even color right around it and once that's done we're just going to move the pan to the side and proceed to grab a fresh pan Right, so very handy to always remember to rest your meat. Remember, this is the only stage that you can actually allow for your meat to tenderize very, very gently. And now onto the fresh pan, I'm going to proceed to add some oil. And to that, we will be adding our spring onion first. And of course, our celery. Turn your heat up to high and proceed to allow that to continue coming to the heat. And in the meantime, we're going to grab our aromatics. So I'm going to start off by just coarsely chopping up some garlic. And proceed to do the same for the second piece. And you can proceed to add that to your pan. 
Of course, at this stage, I will remind you that I am cooking at very, very high heat. And this is particularly to make sure that you get a beautiful balance and mixture of those ingredients, get the best out of your garlic and really bring out the aromas. Right, in a pestle and mortar, I'm going to add my coriander seeds. Remember, these are particularly hard to get the flavor out of, especially if you don't crush them. So I'm just going to grind them very, very gently. Making sure to crush all of your seeds. You should be able to get that beautiful coriander aroma coming through. Proceed to add that to your pot pan. And proceed to mix through. Right, once your onions are colored and softened, proceed to add your carrots. Remember, very important to start with the vegetables that cook the longest. So we're going to start off with the carrots and proceed to just toss those together with a spring onion. Your pan is a little dry at this stage, so we're just going to dash a little bit of oil. And we'll just proceed to add the rest of our vegetables, adding in our pepper as well. Proceed to toss those together. And now to that, I'm also going to be adding some garam masala. Toss once more. Of course, being very vigilant to make sure that your spices do not burn at this stage. And now proceed to add your meat back to your pan. Toss very gently once more and proceed to bring your heat as low as medium. And to that we can now proceed to add about two sticks of cinnamon. Also chop up some fresh mint. And we're going to just Proceed to crush in a little bit of that stock cube. I'm using vegetable stock cubes for this recipe. And just to cool off that hot pan and allow the aromatics to really blend well, I'm just going to add a bit of stock. Of course, mixing continuously, making sure not to overcook your ingredients on one end. Now, just to proceed to end of the cooking process, I'm going to now add my soy sauce. Now, this will do two particular things. It's going to allow us to give it a bit of color and as well just combine all the ingredients together. And as you can see from the cameras, a nice, beautiful, glossy color. Proceed to toss once more. And of course, proceed to add a little more stock. Now we're basically going to allow that to continue simmering down at very low heat, allowing the meat to completely absorb the flavors. And the stock will also aid us in softening our carrots and our vegetables and just bring a nice, beautiful harmony to the, to the pan. But before we proceed to finish off this very simple dish, we are going to take a break allowing you to refresh and change your drinks if you have to, and we'll catch you after a very, very short break. See you in a little while.
Welcome back viewers. For those of you who are just catching up with us, we're right at the last and final stage. And we are right about ready to start plating this beautiful dish. But I am going to finish this one very simple dish by doing this uh, baby spinach. But before we get there, we're going to begin by plating out our beef. Now this has been cooking undisturbed for about 7 to 8 minutes from start to finish. So you should make surely, probably make an allowance of about 10 to 12 minutes for the full preparation of the dish. Now we're going to proceed to plate that and I'm just going to use this big white plate. So we're just going to finish that off. And as I mentioned, a very good alternative to stews. It's also a very healthier option because of the fact that it does contain quite a bit of vegetables, which really give that bit of nutritional kick to your dish. Now, just to finish this off onto a hot pan, drizzle over some oil. And this is just basically to saute your spinach. So to that, I'm going to begin by just disturbing a bit of my thyme very very hot pan indeed once it's nicely smoking hot proceed to spread out your spinach toss that very quickly while regulating the temperature on your pan and of course Last but not least, add in your sultanas. Mix through once more. And finish off with a little bit of seasoning. And you can now proceed to turn off your heat completely. And we're basically just going to move those onto the side of the plate. And of course, you can top that up with your sultanas that are now nicely crispy. And just to finish that beautiful dish, a bit of some chili flakes just to give it a bit of color. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my very simple take on some Asian-inspired beef, uh, Asian-inspired lamb with a bit of vegetables and of course with some baby spinach and sultanas on the side. I will thank you very much. I, w I will thank you once again for tuning in with the show this far. I do also thank you for the comments that you've been sending, the, sending through, but I will continue to mention if you do have any particular queries, questions, or even comments that pertain to this particular show, do feel free to write back to us through our Facebook page, that's Brand Plus TV. And if you have missed out on this and many other episodes, you can still catch up through our YouTube page, that's Brand Plus TV as well. But for now, thank you so much for tuning in so far, this far, and until the next episode, God bless you, and see you soon. Thank you.